Well, good afternoon. Um, looking back at the film, obviously we were excited about uh, getting out of there with a win. Uh, there's a number of things that uh, we need to shore up, both sides of the football. Uh, our guys played extremely hard. Northern Iowa's guys played extremely hard. It was a physical game, uh, and guys were flying around. The, the two areas that, that we looked at as coaches that really stuck out to us that we were pleased about, uh, other than the obvious of somebody like Carson playing phenomenally and, and uh, Shep making the plays, were uh, special teams, which we felt we won the battle of special teams where we, we lost it by a significant margin in 2013. Our coverage units were, were dynamite. Ben kicked the ball great. Uh, he punted the ball exceptionally well. They had one opportunity in a punt return. I think they had five yards. Uh, kick return, they didn't either. We had a touchback. We had it at the 17. Uh, our starting field position was around the 30 on our kickoff returns, which was a, a big difference from uh, the 2014 game, excuse me. And then uh, obviously our, our Cam making the field goal, that was a big, uh, big three for a for a freshman to hit a 43-yarder, and then uh, their guy missing the field goal. So uh, that was really uh, pleasing to us that we, we've emphasized special teams an awful lot. And I know we haven't played specifically really well on some of those, and some of that's the drop punts and those things, but we've emphasized those. And then the other area that we were um, happy about was this is the first opportunity, so to speak, that the 2015 uh, Bison can kind of replicate some of the things we did in 2014 with the offense going down and scoring and, and having confidence in the two-minute drill, which we work every Monday, and then the defense going out there and finding a way to, uh, uh, to stop them. And, and um, you know, Trey was right. I heard him in the, in the post game. We do work Hail Mary an awful lot. Uh, I've been beaten on Hail Mary back when I was a younger coach at, at Western Illinois, and, and uh, so it's something that we really emphasize uh, and have our guys in specific positions. And we're going to look at it because we had two guys in our mind out of position uh, that we have to get that uh, squared away because that's, trust me, I've been there before. It's a miserable way to lose. So uh, I'll take any questions. Coach, I know it's only been a couple of days, but have you had a chance to look back at all and say just from the Northern Iowa game to Devin's interception to the way you guys won heck of a week? Yeah, it was a, it was a great week, great weekend. Uh, got a chance to spend a lot of time with family and friends, and uh, had a great evening on Saturday night. But you know, once you come back to Sunday, um, especially since we don't meet with our guys, um, uh, we started writing on South Dakota. I do want to thank Coach Todd Brown. Uh, he hosted the uh, football staff for a little batting practice yesterday at uh, at twelve thirty, and uh, that was a lot. That was a lot of fun. Everybody took. 10 to 15 cuts in there other than Palasek, who took about 30 and is sore as heck today. But uh, uh, we, had a, we had a good time, and I and, uh, appreciate Coach Brown host, uh, hosting us over there for a little BP. How'd you do your unit, Coach? You know, I was worried about my hip, Jeff, so I didn't pull the ball real well, but I did uh, at least make contact, and um, I'm sure Ryan's got some of it on film. Injury status, how'd you make out? I see Cooner not uh, Cooner's probably the one. Uh, he has a... Not a dislocated elbow, which is good. Uh, there's a ligament issue that uh, it's not on his snapping hand, so that's good. I think it's going to be probably two weeks. That that would probably be best case scenario for us. And so Zemer will step in there. And Zemer did a really nice job. Now he didn't have to play as many snaps as awesome, but uh, snaps were really good. He had those assignments down. So uh, and Zach having Zach Johnson out for a while and Planker's out for a while. Zach Zemers played an awful lot of snaps for us this year. How did Zach, play, Zach Johnson play? He got he, some limited snaps. Yeah, he did a nice job. He had uh, a decent amount of snaps. I think he had over 40 snaps. And uh, I think he'll be stronger and, and a little bit better this week. Um, but uh, no, uh, I thought he did a nice job. Lance Dunn? Don't know anything about We'll find out probably tonight at practice. Is there something about the read option that gives you guys a specific issue, or is it just game to game? It's some game to game. Um, it uh, it was different. This was a little different than than Illinois State's and a little different than uh, Montana's and so forth. Um, uh, but it's just how you play your defensive end and how you play your linebackers and who's your extra player on the quarterback. And going back and looking on it, we had a player on each spot. We just didn't make a play, and that's something that uh, um, is is. We have to work on. We've got to be able to make a tackle when you have an open field tackle on a, on a guy. And, and if you don't do it, that's the issue with the with any option football. I don't care if you're playing Georgia Southern. 
whether it's under center option or read zone option, um, if you don't hit your fits and make your play, it may be the only guy you have on there on that on that particular phase of that game. So uh, we're going to change some things up and, and um, devise not necessarily a, a different plan, but kind of revert back to some of the things we've we've done in the past to to defend it. Shoulder come on, coach. I know he was sore after the game, um, but I, I, I envision him practicing a little bit this week. And our hope is, in Bobby's experience on this, the second time or the second week through, you should be able to get through a full game. So that's our hope. I, I don't know that. That's what we'll find out. Uh, Grizzly, 10 tackles, sack. Was this his best game, would you say? It's his best game. Um, He's getting better, and that's that's one of those guys we talked about from the first game, and now he's on to game five, and he didn't play. A, he doesn't play a lot when teams have two tight ends and a fullback. He plays more in our spread stuff, uh, and so it's still he's not playing 60, 70 snaps a game. He's playing 20 to 25 snaps, but he is getting better. Uh, he's feeling more comfortable. I, I'm I'm hoping this week he, he continues to improve, but we're still a, pr- a work in progress with Robbie, but. For a for a true freshman, um, he showed up on, on a big stage. Coach, as far as South Dakota goes, uh, your thoughts on their running back Bauma? He's, he's shown signs of that he's that he can be good. Yeah, he I I was really impressed with him last year watching him, and I think he broke his wrist prior to playing us, so we didn't get a chance to play him. But he's a hard nosed physical runner, and then I had heard or read that he had an ankle injury and didn't carry the ball very much against Western Illinois. I saw him out there. You can see him in the game plan, but he didn't carry the ball a whole lot. So I'm interested in finding out uh, his status, so to speak. But I think he's a he's a really good running back. He's a north-south kid, but he's got enough speed um, to take the edge on you. He's a physical player that uh, we have to be able to game plan against. So, uh, yeah, the Dakota Marker game in Northern Iowa obviously has that physical uh, rivalry to it. Now South Dakota, how do you keep the thing rolling, I suppose? Yeah, you look at the last three games we've played, UND to SDSU to, to North Dakota State, it's something that you know, we haven't seen our guys yet, uh, but it's something we're going to address right now uh, with, with the team. And I meet with the captains this afternoon as well of, um, you know, you, you can't have a letdown. You, you, you have to prepare like a championship teams prepare no matter who they're playing. They prepare really well uh, on the field, off the field. And it's something that uh, you, you, need your, you need your leadership. You need your seniors. You need your captains. You need your coaches uh, to stay on the guys. There's one thing about Saturday's game, and, and you look at offensively, even though we played extremely well the second half, we still need to run the ball better. Defensively, we saw the, the errors that we had. We had too many of them on defense. It won't, we won't have any problem getting these guys' attention um, to start this week because uh, we need to play better. Bruce Anderson's reps obviously went up with Lance being out. Did he impress you enough to say, you know what, we got to get more into the rotation? Yeah, I think so. Uh, he really ran the ball hard. Uh, he's becoming more comfortable, probably similar to Robbie. He's not playing very many snaps uh, when we were on the, the multi-back rotation. Uh, I, I envision Lance not being full go, at least early in the week practice-wise. So, yeah, Bruce has got to take a, 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 a fair number of reps. And um, I, I still I, I think Chase – wasn't 100 percent we thought he would be a little bit closer to 100 and he, and he wasn't so he's probably still not he'll play we know chase he'll play it's just wait and see as far as what his availability is as far as carries and reps because moving forward we talked about this we we have six valley games left we need a full speed chase morlock uh, and if that means we have to sit him we have to sit him but we need a full speed chase because of all the things he does from a tight end fullback slot receiver uh, receiver out of the backfield. Coach, back on USC, you talk about their rush offense. Their rush defense, pretty good numbers as well. What do they do well on that side of the ball? Well, they changed from a, a three down to a four down uh, defense this year. And so there, you can tell just in watching them, some of their, some of their things, are, they're not quite ironed out yet. Um, but they're playing really fast. They're playing hard. They're getting enough people in the box to stop the run. So we've got to find a way to still hit those runs, but then be able to have some play action as well. Uh, but it's just a different scheme for these guys now. That going from a three down to a four down is a, is a big difference uh, in a transition uh, over a year's time. And uh, uh, I, I like their defensive linemen. They're really active. 
um, they will take some chances, they'll stun a lot, and that's something that I know uh, affected us a little bit against you and I. Of the base fronts, we blocked okay. It's the stunts and stuff that uh, we have to do a better job of up front. One of the different players caught a pass on Saturday, and that's pretty unique for especially around here. <laughs> around here, kind of used to the same cast of characters. I don't say you're surprised by that because I know you, you have faith in guys, but does that jump out at you a little bit? Yeah, I wouldn't have known that unless you said that. But, uh, you know, I don't know what our leading receiver, I don't know what Bra has, how many receptions he even has. But, um, you know, I, that's Carson seeing the defense and, and seeing where the holes are in the defense and, and going to that specific area. And, and whoever's lined up there, um, we're going to get him the football. And I think that makes us more difficult to defend. When you have Carson's ability to run the football as well as his ability to, to spread it around and not to just go to one guy, I think that, that makes us really difficult to defend. And I think we all realize, guys, we're witnessing something that's that's pretty unique and pretty special. Um, Carson Wentz is playing at And I, I know he turned the ball over a couple times uh, on Saturday. But um, that player doesn't come all, around often in FCS football. And um, we're spoiled as coaches watching him. I think uh, uh, all of us as fans and, and, and stuff, that's a unique player that um, I, I'm just enjoying every time he goes out there and plays because uh, it doesn't doesn't surprise me, but it does amaze me at some of the things that he's able to do uh, under the duress he is because he was hit a lot on Saturday and he just kept standing in there and delivering the football. Cooner well, um, is just generally an elbow injury. Is that how it would be classified? Yeah. Spoken at it before with Zach Ross setting the all-time school record for receptions. What is his value meant to the younger receivers on this team? And he's not a real vocal guy, but is it taken on a different leadership role? Yeah, uh, he leads by example. Um, the catches that Zach makes that he makes look routine, I know aren't routine in some of the uh, catches he's made this year, but he does it all the time in practice. And and how he prepares himself to practice on a daily basis. I mean, the guy's in his sixth year. And uh, he still is working his footwork. The catch he made on fourth down uh, seemed like an easy catch, but to have the concentration to 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 hang get get the football first and then lift his one leg up in the air a little bit just so he could tap that one foot down. That's that's stuff that that takes a veteran to do, and he's teaching those younger guys. I, I mean, I look at RJ and I look at even Kayvon that hasn't gotten an opportunity yet. Those guys are watching him and witnessing this guy of how to perfect your craft on a daily basis. And, and his leadership among those young guys has been uh, really valuable to us. Can you elaborate a little bit just on Shepard? Has he met the expectations you guys have for him, maybe exceeded them? And I mean, obviously played through a lot of pain and, and overcame that kind of stuff. But as a player, as a teammate out there. Yeah, he really has. Um, you know, we knew he was a talented guy out of high school. He came from an unbelievable high school in Blue Springs. Blue Springs is one of the top schools in Missouri every year. And um, uh, he came here red-shirted. Uh, and then in the spring, we noticed him, thought he did some really nice things. But in, in the summer, give Coach Kramer and Darius uh, credit, he really become, he came a little bit faster, got a little bit stronger, got a little bit quicker. Uh, worked with the receivers and Carson a lot and came into fall camp and just jumped out at us as a guy that was making plays and, and going up and getting the football. Even his first catch on a third and nine, he twists his body around, lands on his back and shoulder. He got up and he's like, uh, you knew he was hurting, but uh, how tough he is and how competitive he is, he's not going to say anything. He's just going to go out and play. And, and uh, he's got great quickness. He's one of those guys that, similar to RJ, if he gets his hands on it, not very likely is he is he not going to catch it. And uh, Carson's gaining so much trust and confidence in him. How much does Carson's conf have, have you seen Carson's confidence affect this offense and just continue maybe to push them even further than maybe they thought their threshold was? Well, he's so calm. And when you get into a situation like we were in with whatever two and a half minutes left no timeouts uh and he comes to huddle and keeps everybody nice and relaxed and that's i think having a no huddle compared to a huddle offense it really helps you when you have a quarterback of of his stature his magnitude of to be able to just bring everybody in we catch the ball and goes out of bounds rather than just lining up and playing he gets them all in the huddle and says all right guys here we go this is 
just like we do on Monday nights. And, and uh, everybody just play within yourself. Just do what we've done all week long. And we hit some plays that we had worked on all week long that we finally were able to hit late in that game because they finally played the coverage that we'd worked well all, all week long. And uh, he made some really good plays, but he just has such a calming influence on everybody that he, if Carson looked up tight, I'm afraid our receivers would look up tight. Or Zach Zemer would when he had to come in the game. But Carson's demeanor is so calm and cool and collected. That's why uh, I, I think he's the best player in FCS. Coach, where's Dimitri Williams at, <clears throat> injury-wise? We hope to see him this week. You know, he had that ankle against UND, and, and uh, I heard on Sunday that they're going to um, – you know, he ran last week, but I didn't think he could cut to play wide receiver. Um, now having really Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, they're hoping – that he will be closer to 80, 90 percent, and if he's if he's there, can we get him close to 100 percent? He's a guy that we are still counting on to be a a slot guy, to be a return guy, um, and and I hope it's this week. If 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 not, I know he's getting closer. Which was the better catch, RJ's against South Dakota State or Darius's on Saturday night? Wow, one and one A, huh? <laughs> and I can't tell you which order. <laughs> well, the one with RJ. No matter if Darius caught this one or not, we were going to play this week. The one that RJ caught, caught uh, gave us another game. So um, I don't know. There, which game was better to you? Forget the play. Which game was better? <laughs> Absolutely. He put him in a spot that only RJ and Shep could get it. And not only that, but he noticed just in both plays that the safeties rotated from cover two to cover one and knew the play right on the snap. That's where he was going the football. Those are the things that, that we see from a coaching standpoint that they were playing cover two, they were playing cover two, and all of a sudden he saw Kilfoy just move a little bit, and he said, I've got the throw. And he just beat the Hall kid from coming back on it. And that that's something that you know a, a fifth-year senior quarterback sees that not everybody does. And you're right, to be able to put him in the spot, and then those guys, they were both really contested plays, and, and our, our guys came down with them.